put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Bonner Underground. PlayStation Game Review. Set during World War II, this has you going on various missions to halt the Nazi advance. You take on the role of Menon, the French woman who supplied intel in the first game. Menon is a sweet young woman who enjoys gunning down Nazis, bathing in glue so that she will stick to every single wall she ever touches, as well as ladders, and occasionally playing dress-up to get past you know, security checkpoints, but really this is barely a stealth game anymore, so yeah. And yeah, that pretty well covers it for the plot. You know, you go on various missions that are of historical, historical significance, and they do this nice thing, like in the first game, where each, I believe, in the first game, I will, every mission starts with, you know, both starts and ends with clips from, you know, actual footage from the war, and a narrator explaining the historical significance of what you're just about to do, or what you just did, you know. I am going to start with the, sort of the aspects that are fine, or even downright good in this game, and then the gloves come off. I don't expect anyone to wade through the rant to get the positive aspects, so here we go. The graphics were basically fine. You know, they, they do still have that somewhat polygonal thing to them. You know, early 3D graphics, yeah, you know. But yeah, they're basically fine, and you do get to some nice, fairly varied locations. You know, you're in a small village in France during, you know, in the middle of the night. You're in a deserty area, I think those were like the North Africa levels. You go through Europe and North Africa in the course of the game. So, yeah, you know, and the enemies, you know, uniforms change also over the course of it, you know, to, to fit with the environment that you're in. There is a decent amount of weaponry, you know, I'd say a couple of submachine guns, a shotgun, a couple of different pistols, you know, two or three throwables, a rocket launcher. There are a couple of, there, there are fairly few, but there are some parts where you get to at least participate in using a vehicle. You don't actually ever drive a vehicle in this, but you know, you can, and I don't really know how to say it without spoiling it because it's like halfway through the game, but yeah. And you do get to man machine gun emplacements, and that's not a spoiler because that's throughout the game. It had, the first time is pretty early in the game. And that might more or less cover it. The music is pretty good. And yes, I'm afraid that pretty well covers it for all the positives. The, the enemies 
have adopted the tactic of confusion. You see, they will shoot even when they can't see you and couldn't possibly hit you. Like, if they're in a different room than you're in and they're not, they, they don't have any kind of straight shot. They're basically shooting at, I don't know, the wall, I guess. And that, you know, makes you wonder, where, where are they? You know, so, yeah, throws you off. Also, on occasion, they will blow each other and or themselves up. And you're like, okay, is this guy on my team? What, what is going on here? And yeah, it really makes you, makes you wonder uh, more on the, the whole thing of them shooting before. The, some, sometimes they also shoot through walls. This doesn't happen all that often, but it's a real kicker when it does. And they can quite clearly see you through walls on occasion. They will... They have perfect aim even when, you know, shooting blindly around a corner. And, you know, you have a heck of a time getting a single shot to hit them when they do that. Sometimes, you know, they, they learn some new tricks, but Doggy badly needs better, you know, decision-making skills, because sometimes they will duck, even though that puts you out of their view, like, say, you're at the top of stairs. Shooting down stairs, by the way, is horrible. Thankfully, there's very little of it in the game. But yeah, they're at the bottom of the stairs, and they duck, even though they now can no longer see you, much less hit you. They will roll, even when that has absolutely, you know, is not at all helpful to their situation. I suppose I should get to the, the main real problem with this game. It is just not balanced well enough. It's far too difficult. I, I quite like challenging games. The thing is that it has to actually sort of pay off that you're going through a lot of challenge and or be fun, you know, and this one is hardly ever fun. There are a couple of real nice memorable situations. Actually that, yeah, one thing that I did, that I should say of, on the positive side, it does occur, it, it's not very really often, but there are a few really cool background elements in this game. There's one level where you're like taking out AA guns, you know, anti-aircraft guns, and once you've taken out a few of them, the allies can send some planes to help you, and they'll start bombing tanks near you. That's pretty cool, you know. But yeah, the... It comes down to a couple of things. I already mentioned how you stick to every single wall. So basically, if you're trying to make a quick getaway, it's going to be really hampered by that fact, you know. You cannot possibly aim while moving. It is just not possible. This is like one of those lousy games where you enter, you know, that's one of the things I really hate about Enter the Matrix. I actually like Enter the Matrix okay, but you have to go into a first-person perspective in that game to aim, even though it's a third-person game, you know. In this if you're not standing still, you cannot bring up the crosshairs, and you cannot, yeah, adjust where you're aiming. You can shoot while moving, sure, but it'll just go straight ahead, or, you know, you can adjust so you're looking slightly up or slightly down, or even all the way up or all the way down, but say, a, you know, say you're fighting two enemies and one of them's up, one of them's down, you can't possibly, you, you have to actually stop moving, and yeah. The, the, all the and, and though you can't, the enemies have no problem moving and aiming at the same time. Some of them do like strafing runs where they strafe across the screen, firing a submachine gun all the way, hitting you with almost all the bullets. And yes, I suppose that's about it for that, so I can talk about how seldom your weapons actually hit anything. I'd say the worst one is the submachine gun that you, or the submachine guns that you use, which has such horrible recoil that they make a pathological liar out of the crosshairs. I 
fully accept and yeah, you know, it's it's fine that in real life there's a lot of recoil to guns, especially when you're firing continuously with a fully automatic weapon, but that doesn't happen to the enemies. The enemies hit with most of their bullets, and so, you know, you're left with... On occasion, you'll even be fighting a sniper, or several snipers, not at the, not at the same time, but over the course of the level, and you only have the submachine gun, and you can't, you can't, like, focus your shot. You can't, like, stand still and say, okay, this one shot, you know, I'll spend five seconds standing still, and the bullet will hit. No, you can't do that. No matter how, you, you just can't trust. Did IO Interactive develop this game? Seriously. And, yeah, and the submachine gun is actually, what, you know, among your best weapons. It's, it's one of the most necessary ones. The only, you know, basically you can trust the sniper rifle and the extremely slow crossbow and the pistol. Those you can trust to actually hit, but those fire really slowly, well not the pistols, but they have very few clips, few bullets in the clip. So, if you're fighting two enemies that have submachine guns, you have no chance of, you know, shooting both of them with any kind of accurate weaponry. And that brings me nicely into these enemies some of them take far too long to die, some of them are just really shy about showing if they're dead or not. It's just really, really frustrating. I can appreciate that maybe they wanted to capture the fact that just because someone is dead or dying doesn't mean that they instantly just plop over and that's it, you know, they don't, you know, that that's very video gamey, but not real life. Fine, but here it's really, really difficult. If there was like a system so that it would only happen to the last enemy you face in an area, before you move on to the next area, but let's say you're facing two or three enemies, one or more of them might, you know, start to, you know, dance around a little bit or start to fall over, but that doesn't mean they're dead. They might just get up in a few seconds and you might have moved on to the next enemy and then that first enemy plows you down with his submachine gun, you know, and this happens all the time. Also, these deaths are really comical, which is a real flying ointment of this whole, you know, let's be very realistic and true to life. You know, it's, it's very spaghetti western, actually. There's a lot of railing death, with, you know, you shoot down an enemy who's on a balcony and he'll, like, scream and throw himself with whatever energy remains, which is actually quite substantial now over this railing, you know, and enemies shot on the street will jump into the air, and, you know, and that actually brings me to, even if you get a perfect headshot, even if you shoot the enemy so that his helmet flies off, also very comical, he might not be dead, you know, it doesn't even seem to matter that much where you shoot them, I have fired off, you know, a third of a clip of the submachine gun into the upper torso of an enemy and he still keeps coming. And again, say you have two or three enemies and, you know, both or all of them die really slowly. You, have to, you know, you have to use like a third of the clip just to take out this one guy when you, you know, and then you might be thinking that he's dead but he's really not. You know, just, again, if this was moderated, if it was just the last enemy of every area that was really tough to kill, that would be fine, but they just do not balance anything in this game. You know, there's at least one level where you're fighting tanks, and this is quite cool, you know, you have, well, there are several levels where you fight tanks, but anyway, one of them specifically has you taking on several of them, and you use this you know, Panzerfaust, probably horribly butchered the pronunciation of that German word, but yeah, which is, you know, German rocket launcher, and it can be pretty cool, but the problem with it is, there's not just tanks in the areas where you fight tanks, there are troops as well, and sometimes you really can't tell who the next 
enemy is going to be, and you don't want to use a rocket against a soldier who could just move out of the way, and you don't want to waste the rocket on him, and you definitely don't want to be caught with the submachine gun in your hands when you're facing a tank. So, yeah, you know, the game evidently expects us to have psychic powers, you know. And that brings me nicely into, there's only one button for changing weapons. This was not that new back, or this, you know, this is true of several games from back then, especially for, you know, these consoles, you know. Why anyone plays, you know, first-person shooters on consoles, I will never know, but this, you know, I don't know that this is was even out for PC, you know. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, in this, in this level of fighting tanks, you'll sometimes have to switch through all of your six weapons, one at a time, just to get to the weapon right before it. Because, of course, the submachine gun is right before the Panzerfaust. So, if you're fighting a tank one minute and then suddenly a trooper appears, you have to switch all the way through. Because all the other weapons are basically useless against it. You know, it won't even, you know, not switch to a weapon that is empty. You know, you, if, if you try to use a weapon that doesn't have any bullets left in it, he'll just, you know, sort of, you know, punch with it, you know, gun butt the, the enemy, but, yeah, why doesn't it switch, yeah, I, let's see, what else is there, the, it, the, the enemy placement, you, you don't know, I don't know if I've really hammered home the point of, you don't necessarily know where enemies are. You know, they will start shoot some, many of them, I'd say half of the enemies I encountered, started shooting before they could see me and before, and certainly before they could hit me. So, I was just, you know, strolling along, looking for enemies, suddenly I hear shouts or, you know, gunfire, and I'm thinking, oh crap, I have to watch out, and I can't see an enemy. And... Because of the sound, which admittedly was not really that developed by this point, this was like 2000, I can't tell if he's in front of me or behind me, or, you know, to the left in the next room or to the right in the next room. So I just walk right in and get hit, or I make the wrong call, you know, sneaking in, ready to shoot right when really he's left. And, and this happens all the time. And other times, enemies can't even hear gunshots fired in the next room. Like I said, the stealth is barely, you know, it's barely even there anymore, but when it's there, it's just, it's seriously neuroses inducing, if, if that's a word. You can't really tell properly if you're you know, if your cover is blown. There were times where I shot someone just to be sure that, you know, I was like, okay, I can't tell if he's accepting my ID, so I better shoot him just in case, you know, so he doesn't shoot me in the back when I move a little. You know, the, it, it's just way too vague. You, you'll hear someone ask, can I see your ID? And there's like two or three people in the room, and you can't tell, who do I show it to? And, you know, if, if I walk off without showing it to the right one, then he might start shooting at me you know, and all these kinds of things. And then they have this really weird thing where, you know, sometimes you go undercover as a photographer and you have to, you know, and if, if an enemy is like not sure about the papers or something, you can bring up the camera and take a picture of them. And they'll do these really ridiculous poses. I really wish that this game would, you know, get over this schizophrenic thing and just focus on one thing, have have one consistent frickin' tone, you know, are we realistic or are we just having fun with this, you know, it's just really, also because it's, it's constantly, it's not like one level is funny and then one level is, you know, it's not TOS logic or Star Trek in general, series logic with, you know, we go from serious to funny and, you know, no, it's just, it, they're, they're side by side. It just, yeah. That, more or less, uh, I gotta talk about the sniper rifle. The zooming, which, by the way, you can't, 
Okay, maybe that is, again, realistic, but again, then I wish that the game would be consistently realistic. Maybe it is realistic that you cannot fire a sniper rifle with any kind of accuracy without properly looking through the scope. You know, maybe you can't even, like, say, well, I just basically want to hit in this basic area so that you could use it as just, you know, a rifle up close. Fine. But, the scope... You know, they, they did a real Three Bears kind of thing. I, I, I have to admire just how badly they botched this. The zoom, which you can't turn off or stop or anything, is just slow enough that if the enemy has, you know, the, the enemy will probably see you and start shooting at you before the zoom is done. And so fast that you basically can't hit anything while it's still doing the zoom. Did I mention that once it starts zooming, you can't move? And if you, you know, you, you have to disengage the zoom and then, you know, move. And yeah, it also, you know, it, it's not sensitive enough. It kind of just... It, it over over corrects I think that's the, the term so basically the enemy's here your scope is here you try to just get it this way up it'll go up here and it'll, it'll boss your shots you know yeah the, the sniper is as painful to use as all the weapons in this game I get that they wanted to make it challenging and I applaud that here's how I would have done it limit the ammo very much, and then make all the weapons completely, completely accurate, at least when shooting very slowly. Also, make, make kill shots of all headshots and all shots in the upper torso. That way, the player has to really, you know, be, be ice cold about, okay, yeah, I only have just enough bullets to take out the guys here. You know, it'll be like the, the sniper rifle in the first Commandos game, you know. Think about how much you ought to have to ration shots there. You know, do that. And, and yeah, you, you have to make sure to hit them in the right place. Even if the enemy is coming, you know, running at you trying to shoot you. Also make the enemies far worse shots, you know. Give them some freaking recoil, recoil. And yeah, that would pretty much solve this whole thing, you know. Enemies, sometimes more on enemy placement, sometimes they will literally be behind you, even though you've just cleared a room and you're moving forward, suddenly it'll just appear behind you. Several times I could even see, it was like Star Trek, sorry, I don't know why I'm on Star Trek today, just, you know, beaming in right in front of me, or right, you know, right in front of my eyes, even when clearly there wasn't someone there before. You know, this is the laziest way to handle, especially when, when the enemy appears behind you. You know, it's, it's like the equivalent of the horror film jump scare. It's the easiest thing to do. How... Name me one easier way to make a game challenging than have an enemy appear behind the player. You know, have them appear where they couldn't possibly appear, and where you think... It's not even like, well, I'm moving past a barracks, and someone saw me through the window, so the door opens, and out comes some enemies. No, they just appear out of nowhere. You know, the, some levels even start with them already knowing where you are, even when they really shouldn't. I, I guess I could briefly cover the... Basically, there's there's seven missions, well, eight if you count the really ridiculous and excessively difficult epilogue. Yes, the, the game gets even more difficult than regularly. So, you know, seven missions, and each mission t takes roughly three levels, you know, which basically follows the structure of infiltrate, do your mission, you know, sabotage, gather intel, whatever, and exfiltrate, you know, and yeah, this, this works pretty fine, it, you know, I don't know, I, I didn't personally get that into the story, but 
it, it basically, it works, you know, you, it doesn't really feel completely random at least. Too often you're just to, to, to do all the objectives in a level, too often you end up just backtracking and, you know, trying to activate any object that you come across and or shooting at it because, you know, you're supposed to do one of those things and, yeah, just, as far as stealth, I would frankly rather play Wolfenstein 3D, and that's that's really not a joke. That game has better stealth. I said, just think about that for a little bit. Actually, that game does have pretty decent stealth by any standard. But but yeah, just think about how the fact that it had been like five years, six years, seven years, something like that, and they hadn't really come further in the, apparently, according to this game. The machine gun emplacement parts I mentioned earlier, again, there's such horrible recoil. And again, obviously, when the enemy mans a machine gun, he has perfect aim, you know. But yeah, when you man it, you might not be able to hit some of the enemies just because of it. There were several times where I disengaged from the machine gun and, you know, brought out my submachine gun or something. And yeah, the... but, but yeah, for the machine gun emplacements, Play the the game that is literally called the you know Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. It's a third-person action adventure game. It's not very good at all, but the parts of that game where you have basically a machine gun emplacement are far superior to those of this game. Yeah, again, just think about that. A licensed game was better than this in at least that one aspect, anyway. The, but, but yeah, this, in, in general, this really isn't up to par. Half-Life had come out like a year or two before this and level design is much nicer, much more organic. This is extremely linear it, and it, it makes no attempts to hide it. It's really dull as, as far as level design goes. And enemy tactics are definitely better in that game. And that game that game really balances it well, you know, they have great enemy tactics, the enemy is, is really thinking, and plenty of enemies, certainly, and it's not, you know, really frustrating, it, it's much more playable than this. Frankly, some of the things that are wrong with this, I can barely even figure out how they got them so wrong and still released this. Was this even play tested? It frankly plays like a bad port to the PlayStation, to, to the, yeah, to, to PlayStation from PC, but as far as I can tell from what little digging I did, that's not the case. This was developed for the PlayStation, and yeah, and this is just, it's been a while since I played the first game, but that one is so much better, and that one wasn't even that good of a game. It was, it was fine, it was decent, but yeah, I, I don't know how they managed to... It, it basically does come down to how frustratingly difficult it is. You know, it, it's so difficult and so not fun that it's bordering on unplayable, frankly. I haven't really talked about the multiplayer. Basically, you have four to six levels, depending on if you've completed the single player portion or not. You have a couple of different models to choose from for you know the, the players and a bunch of different weapon setups. I don't know, maybe half a dozen, maybe more. It, yeah, and yeah, it's just you know the two-player deathmatch with you know the obvious settings of you know timed match, first to so and so many kills, that kind of stuff. And I said. Oh, that pretty well covers it. I should maybe say the regular ending, not the epilogue, is decent enough as far as, you know, a satisfying climax. I won't really give anything away about it, but, you know, it's, it was a pretty good choice, I'd say. But, yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it. One thing I should say, it's also really frustrating how some enemies are just, 
you know, basically suicidal. You know, for, for a second there I thought I was fighting like, what's it called, the, the Japanese, you know, with the, the kamikaze thing. But yeah, they're driving, what's it called, side hackers, you know, cars with the sidecar thing. Some of the Germans are, and they'll run right into you, even if it means that they die themselves, you know. They're, I don't know, is it trying to capture how fanatical some Nazi soldiers were? I don't know. But, but yeah, and there's surprisingly little, you know, of, of checkpoints of, of having to show your papers, even though it is set in Arizona. Yeah, I mean, Nazi Germany. Sorry. No idea how I made that mistake. Actually, on checkpoint, it would be fantastic if there was checkpoint saving in this game. Just two or three checkpoints for each level, instead of literally sometimes dying right before you've completed a level. It's just so frustrating. That's also something they do. They place, you know, uh, an enemy wielding a submachine gun right before the exit of a level, right? and and. The game literally tells you, ah, you're right, you're almost, you know, at the end of the level, you, you reached the final location. And, you know, yeah, again, it's, and it's just a trick. It's just to lower your guard so that you can die and get really angry at the game. I have no idea why game makers, you know, the game developers, ever went for this kind of thing. You know, it just baffles me that they really rather, you know, yeah. Also, levels take roughly 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Not counting failed attempts, this took me 6 hours. If one were to count the failed attempts, I'd say you can add an hour, maybe an hour and a half to that. And this is not counting the epilogue, because when I realized just how difficult that part was, I realized that life is too short. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.